Hey, I'm Matt, and this is three things on Bioshock Infinite. Mm. First thing, what I think the game's about. And what's cool about Bioshock Infinite and its setting is that there are a lot of little details, a lot of subtext dealing with, you know, race and religion and all this stuff, and it offers a lot of ironies and two perspectives to things. Um, but I think at the end, there's a clear message. One of the big ideas of the entire game is religion and the nature of it. And, uh, you know, luckily they don't really preach too much. But when you see, you know, the whole factor of Elizabeth, kind of like an, the imagery of it in a biblical sense, she's Jesus Christ. She's this miracle baby that is going to bring a rapture onto New York City eventually. But in, in this other tear that you're playing through, she sacrifices herself for Booker's sins. You know, after this 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 uh, baptism, she no longer exists. There's only Anne afterwards, which is interesting, really interesting. And I feel like the game is about putting faith into the unknown and putting faith in something you fear or something like that. And it kind of goes, you know, it's, I don't think it's a big stretch to think that this is somehow a big commentary on video games. The first one absolutely was a commentary on video games the nature of like are you a slave or you know video gamers they 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 are told something and they instantly do it and what that all means you have no choice and is that somehow related to Bioshock Infinite in the way like putting faith into a designer that there is a purpose to this or there's a purpose to that Booker are you afraid of God no but I'm afraid of you Two, the violence in the game. There seems to be a lot of talk about, is the game too violent? Does it deter from whatever message it was trying to tell? It was really surprising to me, actually. There's a lot of good articles, and you should check them out, but I feel like the violence has purpose. A lot of purpose. There's reasons for it. It kind of goes back to the faith thing. You have to have faith that the developer put the violence in for a reason. First off, the imagery it's trying to set, as, as far as Columbia goes, there's a lot of racism. And guess what? In American history, there's a lot of violence. The violent, violent, bloody history. And you see that in the imagery of the game and all the little details throughout the game. It's kind of like Django Unchained, where it's like an elevated reality to push that, that bad history in your face. You know what? I don't think it's just the image. I don't think it's just because it's thrilling, because it's an action game, because it's a shooter. I think it's more, a lot more than that. I think a, a big part of this game, of everything in Colombia, is the inevitability of violence in American history, world history, the characters, in anything right now. You have Booker, who in his past is wounded knee, that massacre, it's terrible, and he's eventually going to kill everything. He doesn't have a choice in that matter. There's little choices throughout the game, but there's inevitabilities. There's He's going to flip the, the, the quarter and get heads. He's not going to paddle. He's going to kill a lot of people. He's going to start a revolution. He's going to destroy Columbia one way or another. Elizabeth, she's very hesitant about violence, but eventually she kills somebody. She has to. There's the whole revolution that occurs, you know? People are forced into violence. A lot of people being forced into violence because that's human nature. That's what's going to happen. It kind of gets the idea of maybe the imagery of video games, that they're very violent, and that a lot of games you don't have a choice. You're forced into violence. It also kind of plays into this idea of a, a Marx revolution, which... You know, it's about a capitalist nation uh, and, and, you know, the disparity in wealth to the poor and the poor coming up and to take out the wealthy and, and creating it into, like, a socialist nation that I think eventually leads to communism. But it comes through violent revolution. That's the big thing about it. Obviously, this is something that occurs in the game, but if you consider that, you know, if, if Bioshock Infinite becomes an extremely influential game in storytelling, I mean, we're talking about literary themes and whatnot in this game, and it's a mainstream game, AAA game, it's selling very well. If this becomes a revolutionary game in storytelling, it comes through their perspective of violence, how, how it gets filtered through violence, and that's really interesting to think about. You're all dead. You killed those people. Elizabeth, you're a monster. What did you think was going to happen? And three, uh, something that's a great element of the first game and Infinite is there's little details in a setting that just bring you closer to the world. Um, with Infinite, it's so dynamic. You have uh, a lot of stuff going underneath the face value. There's depth to the characters, the world. There's reasons for things. There's 
there's a lot going on that you're not seeing that you want to be able to discover. You know, you get moments where you get to explore, and it's so compelling to do so. You can get gear, you can get um, the the enhancements and box of phones. That's all well and good, but even if it didn't have that, I would love to explore the world and, and find these little stories, these little details that they put in the game. It's something, one of my favorite games is Majora's Mask, another linear game, but that's, when I think of games that enhance exploration in unique ways, that's immediately what I think of. I mean, the way you interact with people's lives and change them to get a reward, like a mask, which goes towards the end game. It's so, you get so much closer to the world and you care so much more. There's, it's such a dynamic story, especially in a Zelda game. Like, frankly, I don't really care about the stories in Zelda games, but with Majora's Mask, it's, it's so enveloping and, and it's something I value a lot when, when, when elements are used for a purpose more than that face value of, oh, here you go. I, I don't, I don't like feeling like a dog, like, oh, here's points. I enjoy. I want to, you know, have a experience between the game designer and the player. And, you know, I probably, you know, with all the stuff I already talked about, I probably screwed in McBooger Balls did. I hope you know what that is. I probably screwed it up, but at least there's something there to talk about. At least I felt something. At least there was some type of transaction going on, which is really interesting and something I value a lot in a video game. And I think Bioshock Infinite definitely is something we should look at and, you know, think about. Or something. I don't know. Which you sing with childish voice Do you love the hymns they taught you Or are songs of earth your choice?